Unicorn Hunters is not a financial advisor or broker. It showcases potential unicorns on its show, but we do not make any representations or guarantees about their future value. All investments have significant risks. If you choose to invest in a company presented on Unicorn Hunters, it will be between you and the company. Get ready, world, for a whole new way to invest. Introducing the Unicorn Hunters. We are talking about a cultural and economic shift. A savvy group of investors whose only job is to provide an unvarnished assessment of who they think can become the next unicorn. Still trying to come up with an idea of what actually your product is. Sex sells, my friend, sex sells. <laughs> what would you do with that extra $20 million? Meet the circle of money. Our Unicorn Hunters, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. I am in and I'm going to invest. Mo Vella, attorney, business consultant, and two-term White House senior advisor. Everyone has a place at the table. Silvina Moschini, international entrepreneur and CEO of SheWorks. I believe in you and I'm going to invest. Lance Bass, boy band phenom, businessman, and venture fund investor. One word I love is disruptive, and this is that. Scott Livingston, a securities expert known as the king of nanotechnology on Wall Street. We all know why we're here. We're here to meet the next unicorn opportunity. Rosie Rios, financial wizard and former treasurer of the United States, with her signature on over $1.7 trillion of U.S. currency. This could be a game changer for a lot of families. Alex Konyanikin, a serial entrepreneur, author, and CEO of Transparent Business. I'm going to invest. Together with you, they're on the hunt for the next unicorn. RUV Technologies has developed Krypton disinfection lighting. Forte is a tech company that enables gyms to create a digital experience. CVAC system is an air vacuum chamber. Mechanical trees solve climate change. Our technology now has the ability to predict health outcomes and save lives. So that partnership will allow that they take care of the operations of manufacturing distribution. I have a question for Waz. What would it have been like if when you were creating Apple in your garage, if this show existed? Well, Steve Jobs and I had zero savings account. We were young in our 20s. We had no business experience. How do you raise money? We had to spend about six months figuring out where we were gonna get enough money to build a thousand computers. We'd have been on this show, yeah, Aww. absolutely for sure. Would have would have accelerated things. Wow. So I've been involved in startups of my own and raising <laughs> money and what it's about. I get about 12 pitches a day of people who want me to invest or give my name to their company or whatever. But we've got this worldwide audience 
that normal people have a chance to get to see the good startups and you know, healthy things are gonna really help the world. And I've been for that my whole life. So I'm honored to be here. You can pay me nothing. Imagine if we have the opportunity to see the next Apple from the ground up. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm sure. Well, we're looking for the next Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, right? But guys, you know, I am in the presence of greatness in this circle. And Rosie, what drew you to this? So in 2011, when I was Treasury of the United States in the Obama administration, we had an access to capital conference and that we formed a task force that became the Jobs Act of 2012, the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act. And it was some of the rules from that act that led to the ability for crowdfunding. So it's great that kind of 10 years later, I get to be on a very unique investment platform that allows the spirit of the Jobs Act to come to fruition. How beautiful. And the fact that we are making a global impact on jobs, on wealth creation, and devices that are gonna literally save lives. Right. You know, Chris, this is globally impactful. An investment revolution. Yes. An investment revolution. An investment revolution. An investment revolution. I think we should go back and remember the very first episode. It was uh, far UV technologies, wasn't it? I mean, it? I know I was nervous because I had no idea what to expect. I just wanted to make sure that I gave great advice, that I knew what I was talking about, and y'all made me feel so comfortable. Let's go back to that. What, what did you think? Well, first of all, I'm now on their advisory board. Oh, nice. I'm working very closely with the CEO and his executive team, and they're growing very rapidly. They are. The founder actually shared with me that the primary benefit of him appearing on the show was the volume of deals which he's received as the result. Ancillary benefits as well. Well, uh, let's take a minute to go back to and see where they started and where they are now. Vampire, every morning, eight four, three. My name is PJ Piper, and I'm the founder and CEO of Far UV Technologies. The Unicorn Hunters platform really helped us in our primary need, which is to build awareness and visibility for the technology solution that we're offering. For over 100 years, we've known about a spectrum of light that can destroy any virus, bacteria, or fungus. Far UV Technologies has developed Krypton disinfection lighting. The initial episode has gotten over, I think, 2.6 million views. And that has led to a lot of additional sales reps, additional advisors, additional customers, all contributing to our growth in sales. And this is a ceiling fixture. It looks a lot like a smoke detector. It goes on the ceiling. It autonomously and continually disinfects the air around us that we're breathing, any of the surfaces that we're touching. For PJ, let's talk about your infrastructure. The diversity that the panel had allowed there to be a lot of different perspectives. Tell us where you are today and tell us where you think $20 million is going to take you. We've been doubling our sales and production capacity every two to three months to just address the almost insatiable demand that we already have for our products. In this case, you might get the expertise of three, four, five, maybe even all seven of the panelists. So it's really valuable. PJ, I need to know about your competition. How can you tell us that this is gonna be the one that the government wants to do contracts sure. with? We've been in the market the longest. Since we started with multiple SBIR awards, NASA, Air Force, we're actually granted a preferred supplier status to any federal agency. In the Department of Defense, in the Air Force bases, in the Pentagon, they've been illness free since putting in our lights. It's time for our panelists to make a move. Are you in? I was conflicted, but the world needs your product. I'm in, PJ. I'm in. I'm in too, PJ. I'm impressed by what you've done so far. This is incredible. We have received acknowledgement as being the fastest growing company in Kansas City right now in terms of realized sales. So we're very excited about that. Yay! Take all my money, take it all. Well, there were a lot of positives that gave the ability to tell the story to a broad audience I couldn't have 2.5 million meetings in the last several months, but at least there was exposure there. The amazing thing is that I can see it in every hospital, every schoolroom, every home. Thank, Thank you very you much. Awesome. My name is PJ Piper. 
I'm the founder and CEO of Far UV Technologies, and we were the first company to present on Unicorn Hunters. I think the beauty of Far UV is that they provided a need at the best time. Yeah. Obviously, COVID opened a door that no one saw coming. Yeah. And the fact that they're able to meet that demand, I mean, we're literally solving for something that no one saw coming. Right. When I come in, I think, oh, a new company, a new product. I look for special things about it that make it better than the average person would think of. And I was educated that UV has different ranges and it'll kill COVID, but far UV, 220 nanometer ultraviolet, our skin wasn't so susceptible to it and yet it would kill the virus. I was kind of impressed that they'd thought things out and come up with such a good solution. It'd be interesting to see, well, you know, where they go in the future. What has surprised you so far? Yeah, I would say for me, it's the true appreciation for the courage that it takes for that leap. Oh yeah. And the newfound respect that I have for Waz and thinking about what you had to go through to make the leap that you did. I mean, you transformed the world. But that amount of courage, it's gotta be scary. It's gotta be scary to be where they're at. Waz, what surprised you most? Well, I'm amazed at how many companies there are out there that have starting ideas that really can become unicorns, that really are doing that amazing things in the world. Right. And I really feel good for our viewing audience. They are going to find some great investments. Yeah. What I've really learned is how important diversity is in investment. It is so important to have all kinds of walks of life within a company because everyone has their own perspective. So to have a company that is full of diversity, I think is just so, so important these days. Well, even among our own ideas, we have a lot of diversity. Mm -hmm. That yeah. works well. So I can't let you off the hook. The global audience has a question for all of us. Okay, so I have a startup idea that I do really believe can be the next unicorn idea. I'm curious, how does someone like me go about growing their brand to the point where I can come inside the circle of money? Wow. It's simple to apply. You just go to unicornhunters.com, you fill in a simple form, make your case that your company is likely to become a future unicorn. If selected for a short list, you'll be invited to provide somewhat more information if everything checks out, you'll be invited to present your innovation to millions of people on this show. Sounds easy to me. You also need to show that you can scale fast enough to become a unicorn company and provide high return on investment. So social, ethical, financial, really three tiers that you're looking for. Yes, and you also have to be charismatic. All right, I'd never make it on then. <laughs> <laughs> we have a global team of vetters. We have some in South America in Europe, in the United Kingdom, and all over the United States, helping us identify future unicorns. Let's talk to one of those strategic folks. My name is Jason Scott, head of Start Developer Ecosystems at Google, and I currently run Google's programs focused on supporting entrepreneurs, both in the US and around the globe. I believe there's a huge disconnect and in general inequity in the startup ecosystem, and honestly, a proximity bias um, with founders who are located in four major cities getting access to 90 plus percentage of capital. I'm excited to contribute to the Unicorn Hunter show and mission through connecting awesome entrepreneurs to this platform and democratizing access to capital. We welcome anybody who believes, the more the merrier, right? Yes. Precisely. Well, Rosie and Sylvina, the first seven out of seven was actually a female unicorn. It had to have a special sort of poignance for you, yes? She did a fabulous job. We're talking about Lauren Fondos from yes. Forte Fitness. I was just impressed the second she came out. She's one of those people, you're gonna invest in the person more than the company. Like when I, I showed it to my kids, the first thing I said is, when you make a pitch, here's a great case study right oh, here. great. Stand by everyone. Hey guys, my name is Lauren Fundos and I'm the founder and CEO of Forte. Forte is a tech company that enables gyms to create a premium digital experience. We have developed a fully automated proprietary hardware and software streaming solution for gyms to leverage. 
Unicorn Hunters was an amazing experience. Since then, our revenue has 3X'd, our users have 3X'd. We've onboarded a ton more clients. We are powering the biggest names in fitness from the United States to Canada, Europe, and beyond. It just definitely brought like a newfound energy to the company. We're hustling as a business. We launched the YMCA's, the NFL Players Association, Under Armour World Headquarters Gym. We just launched the UFC last week, Good Life Fitness, which is Canada's largest gym chain. So we're really hustling with clients, onboarding them as fast as we can. You said that 75% of people do not work out. In this country. Um, you had to remind me. Like, yeah, <laughs> one of them is sitting right I mean, here. <laughs> and how do you plan on trying to get some of that market? It's scary to go to a new class by yourself without knowing the drill. We actually built this feature with a two-way video where I can choose to show my video only to the trainer. I like that. Yeah. We definitely have seen a lot of investments from people globally. Lauren, what are you doing in connecting the dots between software, data, biometrics, and, and trackers? Yeah, you can connect your Apple Watch, your Garmin, your Fitbit, oh, wow. Polar, all those devices. The wearables show people that their heart's working more efficiently, that the workouts are working. Now we have people reaching out from Dubai and China and all these amazing places. Sounds like you've got all the business running, you're already operational. Correct. You've got the uh, the service, the hardware and software established. Meeting Steve Wozniak is certainly the opportunity of a lifetime. My gosh, the engineering, I am just in so much admiration of it. I can build the hardware myself now. I've Lauren, learned more than I Revel in this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, oh my God, do I believe in you. I'm gonna commit. I'm definitely going to invest in your project. You have my vote. I am so in. I'm totally in. Wow. It's opened a lot of doors. We've built obviously great relationships with the unicorn hunters. People are pretty jealous that I got to meet those awesome people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. We are totally really in did. sync. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Lauren Fundos. I'm the founder and CEO of Forte, and I was the first golden unicorn. I think that Lauren was a powerhouse. This was a massive influencer in my decision to support her. She can run the wall. She yeah, I agree. has fire in her eyes. And I was excited for Forte too, because you know it was after the far UV and the things that were going way over my head. And <laughs> this was something I could really grasp. And I'm in a fund with Aaron Rodgers and many other sports people, because when you think Lance Bash, you think sports. Um, <laughs> and I was excited to know that I'm gonna invest in you and I can actually help you in certain ways. So that would made me very excited. You know what I think? She just took me in. And she does that in every conversation. I think you can never lose that, that humanity as an entrepreneur. That's what I think is gonna make her a unicorn. But it's like a masterclass at how to pitch to investors. That's right. That's right. And I think it's our responsibility is really to help the viewer also understand this isn't just about our investment, this is also about their investment. Mm -hmm. It's go and do your homework, do your own due diligence, and make your own decision to our viewers. Some may now realize that the show itself is a worthy investment. Can they invest in our show? Certainly. Transparent Business is a unicorn, and we are now trying to become a unicorn minting factory. Right now, our equity is still available for individual investors, and everybody can access detailed information about it at transparentbusiness.com slash invest. Okay. And we show benefits by uh, taking equity positions in the participating companies. That's our business model. As a newbie here, what I found uh -huh. truly fascinating mm. by their pitch, yeah. I found myself at the beginning of one sort of saying, this really isn't for me. And then by the middle of it, I thought, oh, I can't not invest in this. This <laughs> person is so dedicated and so passionate. Yeah. And by the end of it, I'm like, I have to be in business with yeah. you somehow. <laughs> Well, pretty much we're lucky. We've been seeing a whole lot that are really so dedicated and coming from something deep inside of them, a core values. If they achieve the unicorn status and they get very wealthy, is that going to change their values, their principles, mm. their, their real purpose in life? But if I saw somebody just thinking, this is going to be the step to my next billion, you know, yeah. or something like that, I don't know, it wouldn't turn me on. This is no easy ride. No, it's I not. I mean, when the unicorns right. come here, they're often a bag of nerves they often leave in tears. Now, in a good scenario, they leave with tears of joy. Okay, stand by. But it is fiercely 
competitive. That's right. Yeah. right. And, and the numbers don't lie. There's some proven results here to invest not just in financial capital, but in the human capital elements of this. Knowing that we're making this global impact is the best takeaway. Right. And I respect all of these potential unicorns coming in here. I mean, they take all our bullets and they stand there yeah. so proud. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, we give them 60 seconds to like really give their final plea. No, it's a I lot. mean, it's yeah. a and lot. And just the fact that they are there means that they beat thousands of other companies that apply to be in the circle yeah. of money. I mean, based on everything I'm hearing, I have little doubt that you guys are gonna find unicorns. Unicorn Hunters has a very good chance of changing the world. And we want you on that hunt with us, Chris. Oh, I'm there. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting unicorns. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we thank our viewers for giving us the most incredible start to an incredible platform that is going to change the world. That's thank you, viewers. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, bravo, bravo. Bravo.